Good day and welcome to today's interview. With me on link, I have the CEO of Carbiotics, Christopher Cook. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you, Kaiser. It's nice to be with you today. So we're going to talk about the report. But first mm -hmm. of all, I want to ask you overall, how has 2020 been for Carbiotics? It's been, uh, it's been a, definitely an eventful year. It's been, uh, as I mentioned previously, a transition period as well. Uh, regarding our diagnostic system from sort of a, a B2C model to a B2B model, uh, defining our path with AXIS with regards to the scale up and our other modulators. So overall, definitely proud of the, of the achievements of the team during this period. And I think we're very well positioned to enter this uh, inflection period, as I described earlier. So I'm very optimistic. I want to start with a quick look at the numbers. So EBIT amounted to minus 2.1 million for the fourth quarter compared to minus 1.4. What's the reason behind this? Well, there, there are fundamentally no significant differences between the 2019-20 the, the, the fiscal periods. But as you see at the end of, of last year and as we communicated, we did a sort of a ramp up of the, the both the diagnostic activities, but also activities related to, to access. So, uh, that uh, increase in loss is definitely not a surprise from my side. It's what was expected, especially given the transition from the B to C to the B to B model, which was a difficult transition to make. But now we're well on our way. And as I communicated earlier, uh, Q2 is the period when we sort of ramp up our, our true B to B uh, sales activities. Let's talk about the development of the business. In December, you announced that you have signed a collaboration deal with Mwell. Who are Mwell and what does this mean for Carbiotics? Yeah, Mwell is an example of a, of a link and web extension. And that's a service, uh, a diagnostic service for gut health that we provide uh, food and beverage and, and supplement companies to sort of validate the efficacy of their product. So it's, it's, it's considered an add-on service. And in this case, Mwell is a, a new subsidiary uh, of uh, Kellogg Europe. Uh, so it's the first opportunity we've had to work with what we consider a top 10 global uh, food and beverage company on a very exploratory basis. And, and again, we're talking about an add-on service within the context of this type of, uh, uh, yeah, we call it this website extension uh, gut health test that they can offer to their customers. You've also recently announced that you have a new production facility. Tell me more about this, Christopher. Yeah, this is core, definitely core for the business. Uh, everything we're doing revolves around access, the ingredient, because uh, that feeds into the medical foods and then is, our, is essentially the backbone of our therapeutic development as well. And luckily enough, we have uh, Food Hills, which is a, a site located in, in, in Skåne, the south of Sweden. And there we managed to find uh, a, a property owner who is definitely long-term interested in having us as a tenant at that site and uh, is really, really doing a very good job to collaborate with us to get that site in place. And that will be our, essentially our first production site, a 10-ton production site uh, producing uh, uh, access for different studies as well as customer samples and as, as well as sales. You've done this in order to ramp up the production, but what are your thoughts on the demand for your products? Yeah, I guess you can ask the question demand for products and services. Uh, I think if you look at uh, access per se, uh, we've seen a demand over many, many years. You know, we've been constantly uh, bombarded with questions. When can we get uh, uh, samples for doing testing. So that's something that we're quite used to, uh, uh, which is a very good thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy that that increased interest uh, uh, still exists today and it's actually growing. With regards to the diagnostic test, this is definitely something that's growing as well. And I think it's something that uh, is definitely going to grow quite a bit given the fact that we moved into the B2B sphere. And I think that there's probably some confusion uh, regarding our diagnostic tests in comparison to other tests on the market, which are a more pure B2C play. Uh, for example, our test is geared towards food and beverage, nutraceutical companies, uh, health and wellness companies, pharma companies, so they can offer their own test in this case. And therefore, when we're working with the food and beverage companies, we offer several limited metrics to sort of see what the effect is of a specific product over time. 
with the health and wellness companies, we are the service provider. I, we are a core element of their service provision. And therefore, we're behind the scenes. Uh, they don't see us. But our platform itself is highly adapted for that type of environment, which means practically is that there's no sense for anyone to set up their own microbiome test. So any company in the health and wellness sphere offering a service today or wanting to offer a service can simply tap into our gut health test ecosystem, which is more reliable because it's based on three samples, uh, better information, more information for bioinformatic analysis. It's more flexible because it's, it's simply fully customizable. And it has global reach in the sense that we ship our kits to customers via courier, as well as back to us as well within this 30-day rotation period, i.e. from ordering the kit to getting the results is 30 days that allows for what we consider monthly recommendations of a specific intervention. So that distinction, I think, is extremely imp uh, important to make. We're not drawing massive conclusions on you know, dietary recommendations and disease risk assessments based upon one sample, which is the current paradigm in the B2C play. We are a B2B player now, and that is our core business for our diagnostic testing, which fundamentally is a way to, for us to support relationships and strengthen those relationships with our uh, modulator customers. So thanks for clarifying that and let's move on. You've also managed to secure three new Link Gut partners. Tell me a bit more about this. Yeah, these are API uh, partners, which, as I mentioned, will be the core driver of uh, diagnostic sales going forward. And, and again, these diagnostic sales will be a top line driver in the company because it is essentially a, a marketing tool. Uh, one of those is based in, in Europe, focusing on uh, prebiotics and bioinformatics, and then two of them are, are in North America, one focusing on childcare and the other one focusing on uh, uh, yeah, GI-related diseases as well. Um, but very good interest. Our goal is, as we communicated earlier, is to get the API finished by the end of Q1, and that rollout will happen in, in Q2. And because we have full control of this process, I can, I can uh, definitely communicate we're on track for that to happen. And my expectation is, is that those partners will continue to roll in as well in terms of new parties, leveraging our ecosystem. Because again, there's no reason why someone should build up this type of ecosystem when they can tap into ours and we're moving towards this gross margin zero model. And essentially they're getting more samples, more information at a lower cost, higher reliability, higher flexibility and global reach. We have a new year ahead of us. What would you say is the biggest challenge for Carbiotics this year and what's the focus for 2021? Yeah, uh, let me start by saying I'm, I'm definitely very happy about the full subscription of our warrants and that happened quite recently uh, where we're bringing in over 14 million crowns. That's going to strengthen our balance sheet. And I can say that uh, a lot of those options have ha sort of ended up in longer hands as well, which I'm very happy about going forward. Uh, challenges, <laughs> everything, every single thing we do is a, is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity if we capitalize on that and, and really expedite uh, the implementation of our, of our overall strategy. And we're doing many, many things this year, uh, among others, studies that we communicated earlier, IBVs, uh, 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 CVD studies uh, and others coming down the pipeline definitely. Uh, plan to make progress on the therapeutics development side and IP in that general area. As I said, Link Gut uh, partners coming in and they'll be re reported on a quarterly basis. Uh, and then the API partners with the API rollout uh, starting in Q2, which will be a primary driver of sales on the diagnostic side. Um, on the reg side, uh, we've hired a new person. Uh, responsible for everything from ISO to the, the to the different modulator regs and other regulatory and legal affairs. And that's going to allow us to definitely ramp up activities for, for subsequent gold standard regulations, both for our ingredient products uh, in North America and Europe, as well as our other modulator groups. Uh, related to the, the scale up, uh, we'll be working with our strategy of what to do next in Sweden and North America and Europe and the financing side of that. Uh, as you know, I'm the largest shareholder in the company now, so I have obviously a long-term interest in maintaining and preserving and growing uh, 
uh, shareholder value over the long term. And therefore, I'm interested in finding you know, sustainable financing solutions, looking at both leveraging the, uh, the, the, the value of the company and equity, but also looking at debt and leasing options to really uh, preserve capital and allow us to uh, capitalize on, on uh, investments we make to sort of grow the revenue base without diluting the company too much. And uh, proof of that, I guess, is the fact that I purchased, you know, close to 1.7 million shares in the company in the, in the past two months. So uh, I can definitely communicate my position is long. Uh, I see a scenario where I probably won't sell any shares for a five to 10 year period simply because I see so much upside potential here. Um, as you probably know, I'm involved in, in, in either uh, uh, co-founding or investing in about one to two companies in the clean tech, food tech, and life science area per year. And in those companies, I definitely have my own objectives when it comes to uh, return on investment. But generally speaking, when these companies reach more of a public sphere, I want to see about a, a 10 to 100x on those types of investments. But there's a reason why I'm CEO of Carbiotics. I identified very early that this company had the potential if the strategy was well executed in the manufacturing space and getting into medical foods as well as therapeutics to get to a point where you have this 100 to 1,000 X potential if it's well executed. Um, so my goal, I think, is, is definitely to, to leverage uh, the, the opportunities that are here within Carbotics and try and maximize shareholder value as much as possible. And I implore and hope that individuals uh, and that existing and potential investors read up about uh, the potential of the company. There are definitely several reports out there, some more amateur orientated and some more professional, but they do provide very good insights in terms of the company, its potential. Uh, my position in terms of always looking at comparables uh, uh, as a reference point when making uh, future investments, and I've communicated that I'll continue to purchase shares in the company and e increase my position as long as these metrics hold up. And uh, lastly, but not least, uh, ask me questions. And that's something I definitely want to communicate to the investment community. If you have questions, ask me. I'm there to answer them and there to provide context as well. Thank you, Christopher. It sounds like you have a lot going on and that it will be a busy 2021 for you. Uh, very busy, uh, but that's fine. I, I, I function best under a lot of pressure and uh, a lot of activity, but I, I definitely look forward to the, the months ahead because we're really laying the groundwork to uh, activities that are going to happen in a two, three, five, and then eventually 10 years out as well. So uh, I try to think long, but I'm always thinking pragmatically of what we need to do to get, it, to, get to these areas, what we need to do in the short term uh, to um, uh, fulfill these ambitions going forward. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me, Christopher, and good luck moving forward. Thank you, Kaiser. All the best.